Conservationists have long been calling for an end to this. Markets where live animals, some of them wild, are sold and slaughtered. Too close, not clean enough, the types of markets where viruses like COVID-19 blossom. Some say that today's pandemic is a watershed moment for curbing the trade. But what happens if we continue with business as usual? Are we sleepwalking into another crisis? That's this week on Down to Earth. A bat, a snake, via a pangolin, the exact origins of the latest coronavirus outbreak remain unknown. But as the crisis unfolded, China did issue a ban on eating and selling wild animals. There are, however, loopholes. Peter O'Brien reports. This is what life used to be like. In this village in Zhejiang province, three million snakes were bred and traded each year. A mundane task back then, drowning them in alcohol to make snake wine. Now residents are coming to terms with a ban on their trade. It is not easy anymore. With the coronavirus believed to have come from meat on sale in a market in Wuhan, China has banned the trade and consumption of wildlife. Most scientists believed it originated in bats, before being passed on to another animal, possibly a snake or pangolin, before finally jumping to humans. This isn't putting off some Wuhan locals who are now out of lockdown. We have eaten those foods for thousands of years. There may have been some problem during the processing of the food, so we should be more careful with that, like cooking them for longer and checking if they're fresh. We'll still go to the wet markets, even if it's unsafe, because the prices in the supermarkets are higher. China has pledged a tougher response than the one which followed the 2003 SARS outbreak, vowing to enshrine its ban into law. But the use of wild animals runs deep in Chinese culture. The millions of wild animals are still suffering on China's fur farms on the farms for the traditional Chinese medicine, for display and for laboratory use. I personally believe that the shutting down wildlife operations and trading for the exotic food market is not enough. Some in other cultures have been disgusted and outraged seeing what's on sale in some parts of China, even more so because of the link to the pandemic. Many viruses, however, like bird flu and swine flu, don't come from exotic or wild animals and can be just as deadly. As we just heard, wildlife can still be traded in China for medicinal purposes. And in March, the government approved the use of bear bile, along with goat horn powder and other plants, as a treatment for coronavirus. In these images, we can see bears locked in narrow cages with the bile removed from their gallbladder. Wildlife advocates describe the extraction process as gruesome and say it highlights China's contradictory approach to wildlife. Far beyond the impact on human health, the use of wildlife can have devastating consequences for species survival. Many organisations are working to ensure the animals are protected. We spoke to the world's leading wildlife trafficking watchdog. Well, wildlife trade is global. I mean, every country in the world is, is trading wildlife and wildlife products. Uh, France, for example, has a major trade in um, queen conch, uh, gastropods from the Caribbean area. It imports uh, millions of reptiles, particularly reptile skins. And every uh, animal group that is traded will have some disease risk associated with it. And this is why it's essential to reduce any risk of diseases being created that can uh, jump the species barrier into people and cause the devastation that they, we have seen with COVID-19. Uh, well, people uh, warned of this uh, epidemic uh, coming, and as I say, we didn't fail or we failed to heed the, the warning from the SARS outbreak uh, in 2002-2003. Uh, and yes, if things go back to exactly how they were, then probably we will end up with another epidemic. But I think we've seen from uh, the colossal impact that COVID-19 has had worldwide, that it really is something that we do not want to happen again. 
Some people have taken things into their own hands, with the probable link between bats and COVID-19 leading to mass cullings in some parts of the world. In northern Peru, this footage filmed by a government wildlife organisation shows its members intercepting efforts to roast a colony of bats, with locals fearing they may pose a risk. Several hundred had already been burned, but others were lucky enough to be saved. And this is a completely inappropriate response. Uh, we need bats. Bats are incredibly important as pollinators uh, and for seed dispersal. Uh, they're not responsible for the creation or, di or the dissemination of COVID-19. And indeed, they're remarkable creatures. There's an awful lot we can learn about the biology of bats. The fact that they are able to host these viruses but not get sick from them. The fact that they are able to repair their DNA uh, incredibly effectively. There's a lot, there's a lot to learn and a lot of reasons why we need bats. And we need to learn to live with bats and not try and fight against them. That brings us to the end of this week's show. Thanks for being with us here on Down to Earth and stay tuned because there's more news coming up.